Good evening and welcome to Between the Lanes, episode number 137. I'm Ron. I'm Shane. And we have a few topics tonight because, as usual, we don't have any race results or reports. So, again, welcome to Between the Lanes, episode number 137. You can find us on YouTube, Slot Racers, the channel, 137 episodes, somehow two videos, and some special episodes. Um, whoa, that skipped. So anyway, maybe it's gone. Oh, there it is. There it was. Oh, this is great. You can find us on Facebook. Between the Lanes is the page. And again, race results, we have none because there has been no races <laughs> for, I don't know, going on three or four weeks now. Yeah, um, you remember when the last show we did that had race results? Probably been three shows ago. Probably was it? Yeah, either 135 or 134. I'm guessing. Yeah, I have no clue. I hear you. So, we are going to go into, oh, we got to back up. I don't know why that came up. Okay, so one of the topics this, this week, it's a topic that never really ends, is how to break in a FK style motor. And when I say FK motor, I'm talking like the internal brush um, FK motors like uh, Mid America Eagle, which I have pictured, um, JK Hawk 7, JK Retro Hawk, um, any sealed type aluminum, or I should say metal in bell motors with internal brushes, um, not to be confused with um, Pro Slot FK. Uh, motors because those have external brushes and springs so I guess before we even get into this so if you go to a handout race because that was one of the questions that was sent in a week ago too was how do you break in motors at a handout race so Shane's been to handout races with these motors and I've been to handout races with these motors and what is your break-in procedure Shane Type motors, I guess, you know, sealed motors or whatnot. Right. I would say, I mean, it's like an FK style motor, kind of like the Pro Slot or the Scorpion motor or whatnot. I normally check the play and all that kind of stuff. And, you know, supposedly they've been raining in like an hour prior to being shipped or whatnot. I normally run them in a little bit more. And, um, I probably run them in for another hour and just oil them because you can't really change the brushes or springs or anything like that because they're all sealed off. Right. I mean, if anything, the glue that marks, I kind of play around with the brush hoods. Right. You know? Well, I took like a pair of pliers on the hood and was just moving the hood and it was changing the pitch of it. I was like, huh, all right. You mean, okay, you mean the tab? Right. Okay. Not the hood, the tab. Right. Okay. But I mean, for the most part, I just, and then like, I was running it, and I'm, Chris Radish was like, take some lighter fluid and like soak it. He's like, that'll help cut the brushes better. It's like, oh, all right. Yeah, Chris has been around for a while and he's played with these motors way more than I have. So I was like, I'll take his advice and do one that way. And that was actually the one I ended up racing in both classes. Okay, so like lighter fluid will cut cut the brushes. The only thing with lighter fluid is it has naphtha, which has oil in it. Right. So that's that's like that I flammable. <laughs> well, I'm not worried about. I've never I've never had one flame up, but I mean I I don't. Yeah, I don't use lighter fluid because of the naphtha. So right. So of course, there's all these different. Uh, concoctions. Um, I so, think I've tried them all. <laughs> okay. So some people, you know, simple green, and then there's the purple, purple power or something. There's some kind of cleaner purple power out there that right. people are using now. And of course, there's water, um, there's right. lighter fluid. Um, it doesn't really matter because the liquid, the liquid is what actually cuts the brush or breaks the crust off the brush. Right. 
um, simple green, supposedly I've never tried it, but it, but it, when the, when the JK motors had really hard brushes, simple green would cut the brushes way quicker than anything else. Supposedly. Gotcha. Okay. So, so for the show tonight, um, what I did was, cause normally, okay, if I'm at a handout race and we get these types of motors, um, usually I'll just put them in the car and go on the track and run them for like, you know, oil it up, run it for like 10 laps, stop, let it cool down to room temperature, re-oil right. it, put it on the track, run it for like 20, 25 laps. Yeah, the Eagle type motors, like when we went up there for the, what was it, the Fiesta? Yes. Last year, right. we had like the, the, the Eagle motors or was it Phoenix motors? I can't remember. Uh, they were Phoenix motors. Yeah, I honestly think I just put, I think I broke them in on the power supply for like 15 minutes of that, and just put it in the car and did like just heat cycled them. Okay. So, like I said, I'll put them in the car, I'll run them 10 laps, let them cool oil them, run them 25 laps, let them cool oil them, and then run them for about 40 to 50 laps. And that's, I mean, the brushes are seated in and whatever, however that motor's running, that's, that's, it's not going to get any better. I mean, like, You've, you've reached a maximum velocity, I guess we'll say. So now when we went to the race at Turn and Burn last summer, because we used Hawk 7s and supposedly they had the hard brushes in them, I did run them in, in water for like a minute each, right. then blew them out, and then put them in the cars and went and ran them. So um, the Eagle Motors – my recent experience, I've just put them in the cars and just ran them, kind of like the Phoenix motors. Like I didn't, yeah. I didn't, uh, no water dip, no nothing. Just put them in the car and go run them. And I, with the retro, or not with the retro Eagle, but the Eagle motor, um, it seems like, like I, like they've run them in on a, a local oval track. So it is 96 foot on red lane. So I just go out there on red lane and run it. So, Sticking, just sticking the motors in the cars and running them. Um, it takes like 40 to 80 laps nonstop running them. And they usually pick up about two tenths. But usually once they get going as fast as they go, they don't go any faster after that per se. You know what I'm saying? Like, so, um, then I went out there and I took some motors and I ran them in on the power supply for 30 minutes, thinking maybe that might make them run in quicker on the track. So I ran them on 30 minutes, went to, and you know, I didn't really like the motors, they all ran good, but they all picked up a tenth or so, tenth, tenth and a half after they after I ran probably 20 to 40 laps on them. So running them on the power supply really didn't make that much of a difference. So what I did here at the shop, because we ne no one knows how long you dip a motor for before the brushes are fully seated. Is it, is it 20 seconds? Is it 30 seconds? Is it a minute? Now, with the, with the, when the Hawk motors, whether they be Retro Hawks or Hawk 7s, had the hard brushes, I would put them in a cup of water and run the motor at five volts until you could start seeing a little bit of the brush dust and the brush dust is coloring the water, making it like a light gray. Right. And I'm like, okay, the brushes are cut, pull them, pull the motor out. And again, that would take two, three, maybe four minutes to get them to do that. But then when the motors had soft brushes, I mean, you can only, I mean, you don't want to run them much more than 45 seconds and they would turn the water dark and then like you'd look in and like oh half my brushes are gone so i took three eagle motors and i ran went on the ran one in on the power supply and um for 30 minutes like i had done previously i'm gonna see if we can get this photo to change hmm interesting a little bit of technical difficulty here. So let's do this. Stop this. 
and I'll go back in here. We'll do this. Okay, so this is what, well, wait a minute, I've got to do this. Okay, so this is what the comb looked like after 30 minutes. It's got a light blush, brush track on it, a little bit of carbon buildup on the commutator, which that's normal. You're going to get that on the power supply. You're going to get that on the track. Like, that's from brush arc. You can't stop that from happening when you run the motor on the track. So this is what, and the, and the photo is not the greatest, but it's the best I could do. But you can tell that the brush after 30 minutes on the power, power supply, the five volts, the brush is about halfway seated. It's not fully seated, but it's about halfway. So probably if I'd run this motor for an hour, it would have been fully seated. But I just thought we'll go 30 minutes, then we'll cut the end bell off of it, and we'll see what the brush looks like. So, again, after 30 minutes on the power supply at five volts, it's only half seated, which is better than not being seated, but right. you know, it's only half seated after 30 minutes on a power supply. So, then I, the next motor, I thought, well, we're going to water dip it. And I'm just going to dip it for 30 seconds, cut the end bell off and see what we got. So as you can see, the comm is really nice and clean. There's no arcing because of course it was running water. So the water, the water like puts the fire out of the arc more or less. So, but after 30 seconds, the brush was fully seated, but the brushes were more than half gone. Like 30 seconds was way too long. So I'm like, okay, now we got to do another motor. So we'll go 10 seconds. So this is what the comm looked like after 10 seconds. It's very clean, no arc. And then the brush is almost fully seated. It's probably about 80% seated after 10 seconds at five volts. Um, maybe, maybe, Five more seconds would have done the full seat, but at the same time, um, it shortens the brush life. So my recommendation would be um, on these motors, if you wish to water dip them or run them on a power supply, um, I, guess, I guess 60 minutes on a power supply, five volts, keep it oiled or water dip it for 10 seconds, and then maybe run on a power supply for another 30, 30 minutes. Right. And it should be fully seated. Because there's, no, um, there's no magic in using the other stuff. And then, of course, after you pull it out of the water, blow it out with air, re-oil it, either put it in the car and run it or put it on your power supply and run it for a little bit more runtime. So um, again, I've, I've seen all these motors run in different ways with, I mean, I've seen guys use Voodoo, I guess Redline Drops. I mean, yeah, all that stuff will help cut the crust and seat the brush faster. Not necessarily that makes the motor run better, but the motor runs at its best when the brushes are fully seated. Because if you put a brand new motor in your car and you run it, the longer you run it, the motor gets faster. Well, that's because you're knocking the crust off the brush and the brush is seating to the commutator. And once they're fully seated, the motor is not going to get any faster. I mean, it is what it is. And that's the tale of these motors. So. Is there anything you want to add? No, I mean, and we kind of both break in motors the same way. I've tried just about every method there is or right. has been talked about out there and stuff. And I mean, truthfully, I always just go back to the, the, the same old, just oil it and break it in. Right. Normal, you know? Right. And just listen to it. 
you know, I can remember way back when, when I first started playing with the, what is it, the Pro Slot 4002 FK motors, the sealed motors with the brushes and springs, I had a problem, they would run hot. Right. I remember asking you, I was like, why do these things run so hot? And you're like, well, what are you breaking them in at? <laughs> you know, and I was like, I'm running them in like three, three and a half volts. And you're like, no, you got to swamp the volts up because of the, you know, the strength of the magnets. You got a lot of, right. you know, the magnets kind of bogging the arm down, like magnetic friction or something, you know, right. dog or whatever it's called. You know, but I remember, you know, you, I think you were like, you know, you cut the brushes. I was like, yeah, you know, I got a radius and all that. I'm radius the brushes with. Right. And you were like, yeah, I bought the thing up to like five or six. Right. And it should run cooler. And I started doing that. I was just like, oh, all right. Wow. Well, yeah. It runs a lot cooler now. Right. You know. And that'll be, that'll be, yeah. a, um, that'll be a, a future discussion on a future show, like running the ProSod FK motors and, external brush type motors that'll just be right. another i don't want to confuse people with what's right. going on here with these motors and yeah. <clears throat> you know like of course i did this with uh with the mid america eagle motor now jk hawks or jk hawk sevens retro hawks hawk sevens you might find it may take a little longer to to seat their brushes in but you really won't know until you did what I did, and that is take some motors and try different things and then cut them open and see see what the results were because, again, I don't think anyone's really ever done this before. Right. But that was my findings today was, like I said, water dipping. I wouldn't go more than 10 seconds. And uh, power supply, I don't think I'd go more than an hour. Right. A dry break-in versus a wet break-in. And that's the thing too, like, you know, you could run a, you could run a motor on a power supply and squirt, squirt in voodoo or hoodoo or red line or lighter fluid. Again, right. how long is it going to take to seat the brushes is anybody's guess. You won't know until you cut the end bell off to find out. Right. The thing that I liked about using like the lighter fluid was I noticed I've run the motor for like 30 minutes let it cool off and everything, you know what I mean? Right. And then, you know, turn the motor back on, and then I would spray some lighter fluid in it. It almost acted like it would also clean up the calm some. Yeah, yeah. You hear the, you know, you hear the, the like the RPM of the motor would kind of go up or whatnot. Well, that's, you know what I mean? Right. Well, that's because you're lubricating the commutator, so it's like spinning a lot freer. Yeah, slicker. Right. Yep. Right. But see, that yeah. when that stuff goes away, then the RPMs come down. Right. Yeah, you know, it's just a temporary... Do that and everything, you know, you kind of have it in your hands, so you feel the stuff drying up. Right. I'll rev it up just a little bit, just to kind of, if there's any creeping crud down in the comm slots, blow those out, you know, and then I'll oil it, let it run a little bit more. Right. So, yep. So, no. that was my experiment today. Those are my findings. Your mileage may vary, but hey. I think I went where no man's went before. There you go. Sacrifice three motors for the for our for our faithful viewers and followers of Between the Lines. So gotcha. all right, so moving on. Oh, yeah, before we go. So here's here's a picture of two cups of water. And I've always told people when you're gonna break your motors in, you should get the clear solo cups because then you can actually see. So the cup on the left is what the, what the uh, water looked like after 10 seconds of running. You can see it's like a light gray color versus the cup on the right, which is fresh, clear water that hasn't been dipped yet. So- We have leaded and unleaded. Well, yeah, and you have a night and day difference in what the water looks like, <laughs> so- <laughs> Should they use distilled water or can they use tap water? I use tap water. I mean, that's what I used for this. And if you're in Michigan, what do you do? Uh, well, if you're in Flint, Michigan, you get bottled water. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, yeah, I mean, I've, I've had people tell me they use distilled water. I don't know if there's any damn difference. Yeah, in, I just figured since we were talking, you know, again, someone was thinking, you know. Hint, hint, if I can get Roger to donate 20 motors, I can, I can do them in, like, all kinds of different stuff. 
There you go. We'll probably have an hour Our show on all the findings. So, right. yep. So there you have it. That's what your water will look like if you do it right. And don't drink it. And don't drink it. All right. Um, no races on the schedule. Um, some races are still scheduled, but uh, things be determined. Yeah, things are still moving around. So um, I right. really don't even have an up to date count. I mean, the only thing I know that's still scheduled that hasn't changed would be the F two thousand Nats, the Chicago Land on March sixteenth, and sorry, passed, hasn't it? I'm sorry, May sixteenth. May 16th, and the OCC Enduro is also that date. I've, it's still scheduled to take place. Right. Um, and then the USRA Nats in June is still scheduled for June. Hasn't been moved yet, so. And the Mid-South race that we have scheduled in May, to my knowledge, is still scheduled for May. So okay. I think it was the second weekend in May. Okay. But we'll keep you up to date as we know more, and depending on what, how these shutdowns go on, um, you know. I guess, I guess the good thing too is I'm I'm still kicking. I'm still well. <laughs> I have so far, avoided everything with my essential job. <laughs> right. So, yeah, I've, everything. I've been in the thick of everything. So people are like, "What have you been doing?" Like, oh, I've been washing my hands a lot. There you go. All right. So um, last week we seen the passing of John Secchi of the UK. John was a longtime racer in the UK. He's kind of raced a little bit of everything throughout the years, his many years of racing. Um, he's going to be sorely missed. He was a fixture at a lot of the UK retro races and and uh, some of the other races over there and. Um, um, may he rest in peace and uh, prayers and thoughts to his family and um, all of his friends and racers over in the UK. So that's all I have for that segment of the show or the episode. So a um, couple more questions. So, and we have giveaways later too. So um, one question that was sent in was what is proxy racing? I don't know if it was sent in as a joke or maybe this person didn't know, but the question was sent in. So proxy racing is usually, um, can you, it can be one race or it can be um, maybe a series of races. It's where you would build a car um, to a certain rule set and then you would mail your car to the organizer or promoter of the event. And then it would be raced, driven by some different drivers wherever the race may be held. So, <clears throat> excuse me, for example, they used to do, a few years back, they used to do these thingy proxies over in Europe. So they would announce that like, we're going to do this proxy race. It's going to be these dates. Mail us your cars by this date. And they will be entered into the race. And they would have usually a, a um, kind of, special guest racers to drive the cars. And um, so people from all over the world could mail their cars to um, say Europe. And um, then on race day, um, I guess they would put the cars into heats. And, um, you know, so like they'd run a main, like say if they had 24 cars, they'd run three mains with the three cars. I don't think they qualified them or anything. They could have and seated the races that way, but. I think they usually just throw the cars on the track and the eight guys race them and they keep totals and score right. and they have winners. And um, that's pretty much what proxy racing is. And I know that. Well, as you're speaking of this, I actually Googled it on my phone. Okay. And sent you a, a link to your phone that you may post on the page or in a comment bar. I actually just Googled, you know, what is slot car proxy racing, and there's an oh. article on it that kind of breaks it down and stuff like that. It's kind of neat. Right. So if you go to, well, I can't give you, I can't really put this up on the screen. So 
Well, what, you just Googled slot car proxy race, right? I actually just put in proxy racing in okay. the Google thing. Yeah. Or in the Google search bar, and it came up, you know, what is slot car proxy racing? Okay. And it's a racing folk or slot fulcrum. Gotcha. Forum. Okay. So. so Google that, and you can find out more information, and you can probably go and see past events and how they worked and stuff. So. Yeah, because this was talking. Yeah. I know that. Very interesting. I know that Mid America is getting ready to, or they just announced they're going to do a proxy drag race and you can mail your drag cards in. I don't know if all the details have been put up yet, but right. um, prox I've never participated in a proxy race, but I think it would be cool. I think it's kind of cool to be able to um, send your car somewhere and it actually gets raced on a track. Um, granted, Half the fun is racing your own car, but if right. you're out in the middle of Timbuktu and you don't have a track within, say, three or four hours, or maybe you don't have a track within 10 hours, the other half the fun is building the car. So you can get right. half of the fun of building the car and then sending it. And like I said, most of these proxy, proxy races have experienced good drivers. Um, they race the cars and then they can report back to the car owner, like, you know, your car, you know, maybe it needed a different set of tires or maybe we, uh, we feel it needs to be this or, you know, you need to change this and right. um, you can get some input on how your car was in competition. Cause I mean, some guys can build, but they can't drive. You know what I'm saying? Oh, yeah. So, and then, and then some guys can drive and they can't build. But what I'm saying is, um, you know, like on Facebook, I mean, I see a tons of people that I've never seen a, seen of at a race or heard of them racing, but they know a lot about slot cars and building slot cars and stuff. So, um, you know, it's like if I, if I build a car for somebody and I send it to them and they go and they win with it, that's really cool. So I think, Proxy racing, I always like watching my my cars win if someone else is driving them. You know what I'm saying? Like if you help somebody right. or – so I think if you build a car and you send it somewhere and it did really well, that would that would be something to be happy and be proud of. So, oh, yeah. Um, I'm not building a drag proxy car, but I'm just saying, um, <laughs> you know, so – I think we've both built plenty of cars for people who have gotten and done very well with – Right. And the closest thing, I guess, to a proxy race we've had in the States in quite some time would be the last couple of Shinoda reunion races where guys have sent cars in from around right. the country. And I know there's one guy from Australia that even sends cars up each year. And sometimes those guys just enter them in the Shinoda, like judging period, you know, like, and then some, actually send them to actually be raced in the period correct race. So that's the closest kind of thing that we get to a proxy race. But that's right. that's more of a that, – that race is more about sending or I guess showing off your old cars more than it is racing your old cars. Right. So, I mean, like there was like 60 cars entered – close to 60 cars in the Shinoda reunion this year, but I think only about a, I'm thinking a dozen or so raced. So it's more show than go. So there you have it. And then another question, this was actually posted in Slot Car Race Talk on Facebook. And um, our buddy Mike Fleming posted, he says, what do you guys think of watching iRacing on TV? So, uh, to me, the subject was watching it on TV. I don't, like, I'm sure some people would probably say, I hate iRacing, and there's people that love iRacing, but right. what do you guys think of watching iRacing on TV? We talked a little bit about this pre-show, but, uh, so what's your take on it, Shane? Like, what, what's... I've never watched it. Okay. You know? Okay. I, I like it. Over, I shouldn't say I never watched it. You know, scrolling through Facebook on my phone. Obviously, now there's more people being, I guess, active with it or interactive with it or whatnot. You know. Well, I think the big attention. I think the 
I think the thing that's drawing attention to it is that NASCAR has now done three races and they've right. been televised and IndyCar's followed I mean, it's crazy. We're talking about it now and you know, on a link that I've liked on Facebook, dirt on dirt. They got the 13th annual Schaefer's Oil Spring Fling Night 3. It's live, and it's right. basically eye racing. Right. You know? And, um, I mean, I have nothing against eye racing. To me, it's just, uh, yeah. it's like, if you're if you're doing it, it's like playing a video game. A little more interactive, right. I guess. I'm not, oh, a, yeah. I'm not a big video game player. Um, Same here. I just, like, I, I could never get into it. Um to me, watching I racing, if I was to watch an I race, it'd be like when I was a kid going to the arcade and watching somebody play Centipede or Pac Man. Right. You know, it's like watching cartoons. It was kind of cool for about five minutes, and that was enough. You know what I'm saying? Like, yes, yeah, about yeah. That's about <laughs> what I get out of it. You know, I'll watch it unless it's like really good or whatever. But I mean, even then, it's like, all right, I've had enough of this. Right. You know. But see, the whole I racing thing is still keeping attention on nascar beans are not racing right doing real racing so i mean it may be different if i had you know the setup and all that and actually was more involved in it and it may be you know totally different but just right you know so right kind of like you i've never you know been really into video games i've right. always been more of a you know go outside and work on race cars or jump on the four wheeler and try not to wrap myself around a tree. Right. You know, I've just, I've never, I've always been an outside kid. You know? Cause I know like, like Cap Henry's into it. Um, Ralph Thorne is into it a little bit. I, I say into it, they do it. You know what I mean? They get on there and. Oh, yeah, I think uh, Russ Martin. Russ Martin's you know, getting. And all those guys have been kind of getting into it. They're getting started. Um, but I mean, I think once. They get back to real racing. I mean, what's going to happen to the eye racing? I mean, it's basically it's over unless they decide to do it through the winter months. Right. Again, to keep going. Like a winter league or whatnot, just so people can yeah. work on you know. Right. Or, or. But yeah, I, I'm. Um, you know, if you go to the question, what do you think of watching eye racing on TV? I'm like two thumbs down. I mean. Uh, I wouldn't give it a thumbs down. I would just. It just, it, just I, I, it has no, I have, it has no appeal to me. And like, right. okay, so like last week when, you know, Clint Boyer got bubba I mean, I just like seen that. Um, I guess it was on probably Yahoo News. They were talking about Bubba losing his sponsorship over the deal. Video game, yeah, because I guess so, he quit earlier or something like yeah, that. Yeah, so I, so I, so I'm reading the article, and then they had like you know two little video links to you know so i watched him and boyer get together and then watched the one where they had the camera like in bubba's house or wherever he's got his rig and right. that's it i quit and or i'm out of here peace out so right. i mean you know i've seen a couple things you know facebook feed where you know kyle bush is testing for the next race you know and it's a oh, yeah. two yeah, minute clip so. you know he's i might nice setup. yeah yeah i kind of watched a couple of those just to but yeah, I mean, it's it's like it's just totally boring to me because um, better to be doing it than watching it. Right, you know? right, right. And it's just I like the real thing better than I like the video game. It's just you know, the, yeah. Right. I mean, if you ask me, would you rather watch a race on TV or be at the racetrack? I mean, my answer is always going to be I'd rather be at the racetrack. I mean, if you're a Dell Junior, Dell Junior, Dell Junior fan, you got to be loving it because you know you get to watch Dale race this. No. Yeah. <laughs> I think there's a couple of them, isn't there? That are like retired or just no longer race that are doing it. Yeah. Well, you can't you can't get a concussion from it, so. Right. You know. Yeah, yeah. That's a plus. You don't get hurt when you wreck these. Right. But again, it's, it's still it's not real motor sports racing, if you will. So. It is what it is. Um, yeah. So. Those were our questions. One last note. Last week we talked about John Cawthon and uh, the person who brought that all up, he messaged me and says, yep, I was laughing out loud when you started talking about that. Uh, yeah, I figured you were. And uh, it took me a minute to admit I remember. Oh, yeah, I know what we're going to <laughs> But, yeah, you can go on Old Weird Herald, and I tried doing a search a little bit ago, and I couldn't get nothing to work for me on the search thing. Um, 
Um, but if you go to O Weird Herald and you, um, I don't know if you have to be signed in to do a search or not over there, but if you yeah. if you type in John Cawthon, um, he was also known as AKA the Crazy Moron. So if you probably search Crazy Moron, his post will come up. So um, I tried, I was gonna see if there was any good pictures or anything and post them up on the show tonight, but I couldn't find anything, so. Gotcha. But if you guys want to go, go to the Old Weird Herald and look yeah. up John yeah, Cawthon. Back whenever all that was kind of going on, I remember seeing that stuff. So I'm yeah. like, you, it's been a while. Yep. So, um, is there anything else you want to discuss in the world of slot racing? There ain't really much to talk about. I've just really been doing a lot of maintenance on my stuff, cleaning right. things up and all that. Looks like you're probably going to get a new raceway down your way, being as Randy McNulty announced today. You'll soon be opening a second raceway. Yeah, um, another one. So what do you say? Good. Thirty minutes or so from the current shop. Uh, I kind of glanced over the post, and it sounded like maybe ten or fifteen or thirty. I mean, I guess it's okay. traffic. I was thinking it said so, thirty minutes, but I, I read the whole right. post, but I didn't really retain it. I just. Yeah, I seen it, and I was like, "All right, cool." You know, another another track. So right, you know, cool. All right. Other than that, it's you know, yeah, nothing. <laughs> right. Work and come home and just stay home. Well, I think know? I think he bought I think he bought that Bristolville flat track that used to be up in Ohio. So maybe that's what he's going to put in the new store and. You know, you guys are talking about starting a flat track series down there at Concord. Right. Yep. And maybe if he has a second store, it's a few minutes away, and he's got that flat track in there, and then you got two flat tracks to race on. That's all perfect to me. So, different, you know? Right. So, yeah, because there seems to be... It's crazy at one point, all the tracks in upper South Carolina and North Carolina... It was all like ovals, and then you like you went through right. a phase where there was a lot of king tracks, and you went through a phase where it was like kings, ovals, and hill climbs, and stuff like like. Is I remember when I first started like traveling the Mid South series, you know, some of the guys were like, "You got in at a good time." It's like why? And it was like because there's not so many ovals. It was almost like every track they went to was an oval. Right. You know, so I was like, "All right, well, I don't mind ovals either." You know, they're they're fun. Right. So. And also this Saturday, um, you can go to the Innovative Slots Facebook page. Um, they are doing virtual drag racing this weekend. It's a first. It's not like animated eye racing. It's actual going to be, I believe, bracket racing. Um, you can go there and read the information because you, um, like you or I, could send in money. And a car would, car would be entered under our name, I guess. This is the way I understand it. And um, um, let's say you get the, the purple Plymouth and I get the uh, pink Dodge and we race. One of us will, of course, be a winner if we would win. Over, there's going to be, they're going to they're gonna pay out like, um, they're going to pay out money. I don't want to say cash. It sounds they'll probably have to transfer the money to you through, through PayPal, PayPal or something. But um, and there's going to be as I say, plaques and, and and cash. I think is what it said. So you can enter. Um, you won't be there to drive the car, but it'll someone will drive the car for you, and you could win some cash and prizes. So check it out. Um, like I said, it's virtual drag racing, um, innovative slots on Facebook. And uh, if you're interested, um, go get the information. And I guess we'll see how it turns out because they're, they're going to have the first race this Saturday. So um, we'll see. I don't know how many drivers they're going to have there. They haven't really said. Right. Don't know if there'll be, you know, two guys, four guys, six guys, eight guys taking turns. I don't know. But. Um, yeah, it's going to happen uh, this weekend. So check it out. Something to do. As far as I, I knew. Board, nothing to do. Well, they're supposed to have a live, live feed and everything, so. Right. We'll have to check it out and report next week. So. 
This week we're going to give, I think we did this last week, um, Mid-America, two packs, two packs, 10-foot Mid-America lead wire, two winners. Each winner will get a 10-foot pack. You will contact Roger Schmidt on Facebook or Mid-America Naperville to redeem your prize. He will send it to you. So, you know that sound. So our first winner is Charlie Carnes. Charlie Carnes of Kentucky. You are the winner of 10 foot of American, Mid America lead wire. And our second winner, I just have one, I have one, would be Britt Johnson. Britt Johnson, you are a winner of 10 feet of Amer Mid American Mid America products lead wire. America. Well, between Mid America, Mid American, and yeah, yeah, yeah. America. Mid America products. The lead wire is good stuff. You'll want to claim it, believe me. And it's free for you two winners. So, Roger Schmidt on Facebook, Mid America, Hobbies Naperville to claim your prize. So other than that, that's all I have for this week. We've yeah. Talked about it all, I guess. Yep. And if you have any questions or anything. Yeah, I'm sure we left something out or we're supposed to report on back on something, but. No, I think we, cause I. Some of us are doing the best we can to remember what day it is. Yeah, tell me about it. Well, I mean, I made I made notes from last week's show, and I kind of covered them all. And I can tell you this: next week we will be giving away that that group of uh, quick time tire stuff because it has not been claimed. And I said on the show we had two or three weeks to claim it. That time has now expired, so we will be giving that away next week. And maybe some more stuff. Gotcha. So, yeah, because I did my homework two weeks ago. That was on last week's show. But if, if anybody has anything, any questions, um, want us to talk about any subjects, um, slot car subjects, um, yeah. um, or anything like that, send us a message. And uh, I've still got two more things to that uh, uh, we need to talk about. So I'll do, I'll do definitely one of those next week because that's kind of a technical thing and I have to do a little research. And then um, there's another one. We've done it in the past, but we'll be doing it again probably in the next few weeks because again, I'll take a little more research. And I think I still, right. have, no I think I still have notes from when we did it before, but because right. it's something we missed or there may be a new viewer. Correct. So. Yep. So that's all I have for this week. How about you, Shane? Yeah, I think I'm pretty good. Okay. Shane's hungry. He wants to go eat. I can tell that. So, nah, I'm good. I'm tired. I'm not going to lie. Oh, he's it's tired. Crazy enough. You know, the weather down here has been in the 90s and they're still building stuff, so we're still running you know right eight to ten hour days yep construction doesn't it's, stop it, yeah yeah to the point now whenever i get home and can actually sit in the air conditioning it doesn't take long that the, the full battery starts draining <laughs> gotcha so okay well until next week everybody be safe wash your hands don't touch your face yep. stay home don't get sick that's your essential <laughs> if you get sick stay home so yeah, yeah. join us next week for episode number 138. And until then, have a great week. We'll see you.